Welcome to this video where I'm going to have a look at the HR diagram again, but then have a look at the objects or stars that don't actually fit onto that particular plot. So before we get into that, let's actually just have a recap of what the HR diagram is. So the HR diagram is the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, and it's a, it's a scatter plot of stars that have been measured, and it's against their absolute magnitude, or their luminosity, which are the y-axis against their surface temperature or stellar classification, which is along the x-axis. So what you do is you go measure a star, you get those properties, and you create this scatter plot here. Now, when you do that, you actually get quite distinct groups of stars jumping out, really. So each star is going to fall somewhere on the HR diagram, and that will help you classify what sort of star that it actually is. So you have your main sequence, which is like a diagonal down the middle, you have your giants, red giants, which are to the upper right, you've got your white dwarfs, which are down in the lower left. Now, hotter stars are going to be on the upper left, and the cooler stars are going to be on the lower right. Now, the reason for that is they're less luminous. The hotter a star, the more energy it's giving out, so the brighter it's going to appear. So generally, at least with the main sequence, which is the bit down the middle, Hotter stars on the upper left, cooler stars on the lower right. Now, the luminosity, just to kind of put into context what that is for a star, it's the total amount of electromagnetic energy submitted per unit time. It just means the amount of energy that the star is emitting, and the units are generally given in watts, although they can be given in something else. So that is what the luminosity is. We can also convert that to an absolute magnitude, which is how bright the star is as well but we'll leave that for another day. So luminosity then, you have the equation here for luminosity of a star, and it's given as four pi r squared, where r is the radius of the star. You then have sigma, which is the Stefan Boltzmann constant, and then you have t to the fourth power, which is the temperature. So for a star to be more luminous, it needs to be bigger. So if it's a bigger star, that means that your R or radius is bigger, it will be more luminous. And smaller stars are going to be less luminous in the same way as a big star will be more luminous because it's bigger. And that's where they will sit on the HR diagram there. So big stars at the top, little stars at the bottom, basically. That's how it dictates the luminosity. And for temperature, so the temperature is a little bit more sensitive to luminosity all the way around. As you increase the temperature, the luminosity increases quite significantly because it's to the fourth power. But it also means that the hotter the star, the higher up it is on the HR diagram. So it's at the top again, so it'll be more luminous. The cooler stars sit at the bottom because they are not very luminous. So less luminous stars are likely going to be smaller and cooler stars. Now, quick look at the actual main groups before we look at the stars that actually don't fit onto this particular plot. So main sequence, there is a mass luminosity relation, which means that uh, as you increase the mass, then you increase the luminosity and it's to some power. So the mass is proportional to the luminosity to some power it actually relates to the actual mass itself because the energy transport mechanism of the car in the um, star slightly changes. So it's not the same all the way through the main sequence, but the point is, the more massive the star, the higher the luminosity. So the most massive stars are going to be at the top again, and the less massive stars are going to be at the bottom. And when they actually finish the main sequence, that means when their hydrogen cores are depleted, they're no longer fusing hydrogen in their core, they will move off to another branch to the upper right, which is the red giant branch. And again, the bigger the star there, then it's going to be more towards the top. So the more massive red giant stars are going to be higher up in that group and the less massive stars on the bottom. And the reason why they do that is they cool down. So the surface temperature decreases, which means they go to the right, but also they swell up in size. Because the way that they generate energy internally changes, they actually generate a greater outward relative pressure which makes them swell up, so they get bigger. And if you remember the luminosity equation, a bigger radius means they get more luminous. So they get cooler and more luminous at the same time, which is why you have that branch off to the upper right, which is red giants. And then 
you have your white dwarf stars. So these are very, very small stars. These are kind of planet-sized stars. Still quite massive, but they're just very, very dense. They're also very, very hot. Now, once the red giant has lost its outer layers, this is generally the core of that star left behind. That's the central core, really. They have no way of generating energy themselves. They just will cool down in time. So what that means is the younger white dwarfs, ones that haven't been formed for very long, are going to be on the upper left. And as they age, their surface temperature decreases, they also naturally become less luminous, so they move down to the lower right in that particular group. Now, they sit down there because they're small, very, very small radius, even though they have very high surface temperatures. So to surface temperature wise, they're comparable to the, some of the larger stars we have, but because they're very small, then it means they actually have very, very low luminosity. Now, let's finish with the, the stars or the objects that don't fit onto this particular plot. The most obvious one is going to be supernova remnants. And this is because it has very extreme properties in comparison to a normal star or just a star in general. They're very, very hot, so 10,000 Kelvin and above. They're also very large, so they can be light years in size, which makes them incredibly luminous as well. So these are going to fall completely outside of the scale on the HR diagram. So you won't actually be able to see them because they have such extreme properties. Now, planetary nebulas are the same, and this is the intermediate bit between red giants and white dwarfs when they start to lose their outer layers. Same sort of thing really as the supernova remnants. These are very large, light year in size, potentially very hot, so 10,000 Kelvin and above. But the central star, which is going to end up being the white dwarf, is very, very hot. And it's about 25,000 Kelvin and above. So again, very, very high luminosity. They're not going to fit on the HR diagram in this case here. And then finally, black holes are worth noting. We actually can't see black holes. What we can see is things like disks around them. So this is a, an image of a supermassive black hole, but it has an accretion disk around it, which is then falling onto the black hole. We can't see the black hole itself because it doesn't give off any light itself. So we can't plot that on the diagram anyway. And it doesn't really have a physical size, so to speak, apart from its event horizon and anything around it. So they don't fall on the HR diagram either. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then check out some of the other videos.